A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb he gave me my name. He made me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me. Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord. My recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading that I just read to, to you is the first reading for the Mass of today. And it's one of the great prophecies of the suffering servant. It's the second oracle of the servant of the Lord from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And these oracles of the prophet of the Lord, of the servant of the Lord rather, are these foreshadowings or prefigurations of Christ. And there's a line that just captures me when I, when I hear it. He says, He made of me, speaking of God, God made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me. This is a prophecy about Christ. Right, it's from the Old Testament, predicting, sort of telling us who this Christ will be. And we hear that he will be this sharp-edged sword and this, this polished arrow, but, the, but he will remain hidden. It shows us the power and the glory of Christ uh, is with us, was with us when he came into the world, was in, incarnated, but was, was very hidden. In many ways, we can think of the incarnation uh, as like going behind enemy lines. The incarnation is when God became human in Jesus, right? It was, it was like this, this attack on the, the enemy in a very uh, hidden sort of way. It was like a paratrooper going into enemy territory in order to win the great victory. This is what we see in, in Jesus. He is this, this great warrior for, the, for, for God. But his, his identity throughout his life was, was hidden. His first 30 years of his life were, were living, lived in just sort of a hidden, uh, ordinary kind of life. Even after Jesus started his public ministry, people really didn't know who he was. And there's a lot of confusion uh, about his identity. Even his disciples tried, were, were not exactly uh, right on as to who he was uh, most of the time. Uh, we see that the demons who knew that this was the chosen one of God, they were quite afraid and they had no idea what his plan was. What are you to do with us, they say, through the possessed people that Jesus encounters. What are you to do with us? What's your plan? They, they tremble and, and fear because they know that something is happening, but it's still very hidden. See, Jesus is this hidden presence of God who comes in in order to bring the freedom and the life of God into the world. We remember this in a powerful way when we hear the readings of, of Good Friday this, this week where we see Jesus suffer and die on the cross and his, his glory, his power is, is just hidden in that whole Encounter, and yet it's through that experience, it's through that dying for us that Jesus uh, strikes the devil, that mortal blow. And we see the final victory revealed on Easter. And so in this Holy Week, I invite you to remember that Jesus is with you. To remember that at times he might seem to be very hidden. 
but He is truly with you. To look for Him in your prayer, to look for Christ in your family members, in the people you encounter, in the events that you experience, to look for Him in all of these ways and trust that the more you are alert to His presence, the more you allow that power of Jesus to, to permeate your heart.